Hello, everybody. In the last month, I have been asking a question in a various form, and every time I answer that question, I can only have uh, 30 seconds to a minute or so. So I want to address this question in a longer details form. Um, the multiple questions are all come into basically asking me how come no other company doing what I'm doing? And when I clarify with the people that what are they really asking, it's really come down to the various prototypes uh, projects that I've been doing for the last six months or maybe a year. All these colorful things, and this is actually from uh, 2022, early 2022, called AG 2022. It has been at the Toronto Audio Fest in 2022, October. And then down there, there's another one, the NFS 325 preamp with uh, adjustable GUI knob that we call them. And I have been doing adjustable B plus rail that can change sound. Uh, the B plus rail is the voltage rail supplied to the tube and I can change sound, change sound with that. And before that, this is like a C312, C318. They can all use adjustable, changing the tonal profile of the sound. Not, it's not equalization. It's not frequency response change. There is no change in frequency response. It's all tonal profile. But those are kind of specialties way to change sound. And these people are thinking, how come no, no other companies have been doing that for so many years? And I have been thinking about that. I never thought about that, why other companies are not doing it because I just want to do what I want to do. So I have been ans answering that question in a, in a multiple times, but every time I can come up with, it's a different, different business plan, different model. Um, they need to sell more stuff and appeal to the mass, but those are kind of bit and pieces. So I believe I come, out, come down to a few points that is more important, that's more easy to understand. Um, let's start with what a normal business need to do to survive. A normal business, small or big, small, one person, two person, in audio industry, one person, two person, small company is not uncommon. But even that small company, they still have a business plan, they still need to sell enough stuff to survive. And there are times that that two person need to support two whole family. So two whole family could be like up to eight people, maybe four people up to up to eight people, maybe even more. So they need to make enough money to support all those people. How are they going to do that? First of all, they can't do what I do, but let's get to that point later. So they need to sell enough stuff in order to sell enough stuff. There are multiple ways, multiple ways to make it, make your product sellable. More obvious way is pricing okay so in order to make make it affordable you gotta make it inexpensive let's not call it cheap cheap is a bad term you can make in, in, you can make inexpensive stuff and still relatively good quality performance wise maybe not so much but it works it's function it's adequate so they, they need to uh, uh, hit that point that you get a manufacturing inexpensive enough to be affordable and in order to do in order to do that you need to have mass quantity and in in, in audio mass quantity high-end audio in mass quantity could be 50 pieces 100 pieces 250 pieces even 500 pieces in high-end audio is a lot but when you come down to a more basic entry-level audio like 500 dollars per speaker thousand dollars per speaker or less it can be a thousand pairs two thousand pairs $200, $200 per speaker can be 10,000 pairs. If you need to get to a million units, you gotta get that down to like maybe $39.99 for a set of uh, desktop computer speaker. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about high end audio. It's not so much about just high fi high high fi and high end. So they, they need to make enough in order to make it affordable, inexpensive enough to sell. That's, that's one thing. And another thing is, no matter how good your product is, 
without any promotion, without any marketing, it will not sell. And on the other hand, if you have a really crappy product, if you dump enough money in the marketing, it will sell. But let's not get to that point, but back down to this one. Assuming your product is relatively inexpensive, relatively affordable, relatively good enough, assuming that you still need marketing. Marketing, including promotions, including sales. And sales and promotions are two different things. Sales is a point of sales. You actually take money from your customer. Promotion is a brand building. Hey, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm not taking your money, so I'm, brand, brand, my, my, I'm building my own brand. So it's brand building, promotion. Those cost money. I'm not doing... I'm not costing me any money right now because I'm doing YouTube. I'm taking my time. It's uh, 6.30 in the morning right now. I, I just have breakfast. So I take 20 minutes to do this video. But for a normal company, you can't do that. So you have to go out and think about in audio, you're going to think about, do I want to do trade show? Do I want to do advertising on Yee Magazine? And how many Yee Magazine do you want me, you want to do? You know, Yee Magazine just pop up like weed. It's like, like trade show. How many can you can you go? By the time you go to so many trade shows, you spend all the money into marketing and production, uh, promotion, instead of production. So you're kind of sacrificing that. But that's, let's assume that you don't. Let's assume you have enough money to do marketing and promotion. You still have to spend money in that. And that is, doesn't directly contribute into the product. But let's not get into that one. So that's, that's another thing that they cannot do what I do because you think I'm actually making money by doing this? Yeah, I make enough money to make a living, but I'm a one person, one person band. I still only have one mouth, two hands. Um, back to them, they need to feed all those people. They need to pay for those overhead. The marketing and promotions are overhead, but without that, you can't sell. It's a vicious cycle. So is it chicken or eggs? Eggs and chicken, which one's first? So do you do marketing first or do you do production first? It probably both at the same time. You need to make enough to make it inexpensive enough. The, the unit has to be inexpensive enough, but still have to be good enough. So then you have to put enough effort and money into marketing to sell that to the mass. Let's assume you have adequate now. So, so you pay enough money in the marketing, product, uh, promotion and sales effort. And, and you have a relatively good enough unit to sell. Third thing, in order to, for a product to sell, regardless of how much marketing you have, is your customer, consumer, still have to understand what you're trying to sell. That's the part that most companies cannot do, what I do, because they need to sell enough to support their overall cost and pay to feed those people by the time they do that they cannot do something special because they need to build a product that the mass will understand easy to understand at least easy to understand for example in audio if you build a tube amp you use specialty tubes you use this tube you use that tube and you go to research what is the trend what is the current fashion fashion of the tube type and then you use that tube type to make 50 amps and you might you probably sell about 30 40 in a short period of time reasonable period of time to make enough money to cover that production cost but you gotta follow the trend you gotta follow what people like at that time and and people understand audio file in the tube groups or understand tube sounds like tube and tube rolling makes sense to them so you can make a Typical tube amp, maybe slightly different circuit, but still a tube amp. So they understand what you're selling. On the solid state side, current fashion, right now, current fashion, October 2024, I believe is Class D. They did supposed to be the latest design, advanced technology. Class D is high power. Do we need 500 watt? Do we need 1000 watt? Do we need 3000 watt? No, we don't. But number sells. That's what they keep pushing higher and higher number. It's like back in the 70s, receiver. You get only 90 watt, I get 105. Ha ha. What's the difference between that 15 watt? Almost nothing. But that 15 watt sells. The consumer understand those number. I'm not into that. But that's, but that's what they have to do to sell. You know, to, to, to just push boxes out. 
It sounds bad, but that's what they need to do to survive because they need to pay for the overhead. It's almost, if you look at the other point, they are the victim. Sometimes they are the victim of their own success because in order to keep going, they got to keep following the trend so they cannot do real advancement of, of design, real advancement of concept. They have to follow the fashion to sell enough stuff to cover. So what am I doing that I cannot sell? Or what, I, what, I'm, what I'm doing, the other company, most other company, if not all, cannot do to sell enough to survive. I'm doing a lot of user adjustable features in an audio file world. That's difficult to accept. Audio file, um, including myself when I was younger, treble control, bass control, loudness switch is probably the most adjustable things that you can easy to understand because you can actually hear a big hear a big difference when you turn those knobs and put the switch. Equalizer, that's another thing. Graphic, not parametric. Graphic equalizer is easier to understand, much easier to understand than parametric. Parametric, parametric equalizer because parametric equalizer shifting the curve, shifting the center frequency along the spectrum, adjusting the Q. How many, how many of you just like lost of what I just said to you? That's why parametric equalizer is not as easy to sell as graphic because graphic sliding bar, you can see where the curve is. You know, the curve is following the slide switches. You can see so. The consumer understand this easy to sell. How many audio file company back then make parametric equalizer compared to graphic equalizer? I can't think of any. But Pro Audio, they both equal. Pro Audio, I'm not going to get into Pro Audio, but you can see graphic equalizer in PA sound sound reinforcement but parametric equalizer in a lot of lot of studio or recording mastering and, and those kind of uh, locations but not in audio file home because it's not as easy to understand so i'm doing adjustable b plus on the tube stage i'm doing mixing of different tube and source they sound i'm also doing adjusting the impedance output impedance input impedance to shape sound S H A P E shape sound. The frequency response remained the same, but the sound, the tonal profile, the sounds change. So how difficult to understand? You can actually hear it, right? It sounds easy, but ask yourself: If I give you four or five knobs, would you turn it yourself? I'm sure a lot of lot of you will actually say yes, but when you get down to it, do you really can or you want to turn it? Lots of people said that to me that they they are willing to turn it, but then when it get down to actually turning, they are timid, maybe afraid. I can actually tell you, my first user adjustable sound shaping preamp, the BC three o seven back in two thousand nine. I took it to a reviewer and I put it in. I know this reviewer quite sometimes. He has re reviewed several of my products back then. I took it in, hooked it up. I said, okay, I'm not going to say his name. I said, hey, turn the knob, turn the knob that you want. And he said to me, can you just adjust the way that you want to be in this room and then I can listen to it? That is not the point for those knobs. The point for those knobs is for you to adjust to the way that you like. With that set of speaker, with that set of amp, with that set of source, with the set of rooms, and if you actually move a couch around, you might want to adjust the knob and just, you know, make it more the way you want. Or even in some extreme case, my case, different music sound different if you turn it. I'm always asking the question is like, what if? That's my, that's my question of improvement. What if? So I can't stop just there. Uh, most customers that actually understand my design, they set it up, they stay. It's almost like a subwoofer, almost like an equalizer. They set up the room that they, 
they want and they stay there for a long time. That's usually what's the case for, for people to understand. But but getting those people are not easy. It it's difficult sometimes because like like this reviewer, he can hear, he can he has ears, he understands sound, but he is afraid to turn the knob. I have never directly approach him why, but my guess would be they are afraid to do it wrong. Not the other way around. They are afraid to do it wrong or afraid to do it not right. But either way, there is no right or wrong. But that statement doesn't sink into them either because they, they, they don't get quite get what the adjustments are for. But as soon as I give those preamp, give the current C312 preamp to a mastering engineer, to a person that have a home studio, knobs, hey, knobs, great. I can adjust the way that I want. No explanation required. Just give it to them. I don't need, I don't, I never need to tell those people where they start. They knows what to do. But in order to do that, in order to find those people, we have to accept our limitation, but getting anybody to accept our, our own limitation is not easy. A lot of people just don't want to admit their limitation and everybody has limitation, including myself, of course. So I have to go through a lot to actually find the customer and find the right customer in order to support a company that have multiple people that rely on you to feed their family absolutely not you can't do it there are companies that are so tight right now or in any other cases they 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 spend so much they need to sell so many pair of speakers a, a week or so many amps a month just to cover the overhead do i need to do that mm. Probably not, because I spent a lot of time to build these things, and you see, is how much work in these things I spend. Um, another question is that how many hours you spend on it? I don't know because I didn't count on it. I, when I have time, I do it, but long enough, long enough time. But then, then those companies just cannot afford to pay anybody to do that kind of R and D. The the time they have to spend on building things, every single hours they get paid, so the company has to pay them to do R and D. Yes, they do some some really useful R and D, but they, as, again, they need to follow trends. There are trends that they can sell for a short period of times, like upsampling ten years ago. Great things! Oh, all of a sudden, it's not no more. So when the upsampling was in in fashion, everybody built decks. They have upsampling, sell, 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 sell move boxes to survive. Not not necessarily to make money, to survive. So if you're in that trend, if you're in that rut, you have to keep doing it just to survive. So they can do what I'm doing. What I'm doing lasts forever. 99.999% of what I'm doing, the adjustable, they're all analog. 20 years from now, it still work. It will still work. It will still work the same way. I almost can see there's no other company is doing what I'm doing 20 years from now because it's just not sellable. Or at least it's not easy to sell. I am starting to find people out there that actually understand what I'm doing, but we still have to kind of train them. Give them the knob and say, turn it. You can hear it. Don't be afraid. Just turn it. So there is no right or wrong. And even if you turn to the sign that you love it and somebody come in and say, oh, that sounds like crap. Doesn't matter. It's your choice. That's what, that's the beauty is. It gives you the choice. But if any other company trying to make enough money to survive, to sell enough boxes to survive, they can't do that. They have to sell something that one person understand and then the second person understand and a group of people understand. Those group of people support each other. Are they individual? They're trying to be. Sometimes they cannot, but they support each other and they go auto buy that piece of box. But that's what those companies need to do to survive. I'm not. I build what I want. As a matter of, as a matter of fact, at this point in my life, 
I'm building this to please myself. And then my dealer said that when, we, when are we going to put in the boxes to sell to some, sell, sell something? But then I start thinking. Because like three or four preamp later, we have one product. But I have learned 11 different ways to adjust sound. So that's one product will have two to three features, probably two, not three. And then the rest, it's optional. That's another thing that any other, other company cannot do. Optional. I can build custom preamp anytime. As long as you're willing to pay and willing to wait. But any other company, they have to build the same thing and try to sell as many as possible. That result into limited among limited number of models, but each model, hundreds of boxes they need to sell to cover the not just R and D, to cover the overhead, cover the marketing, cover the promotions. If you look at my website, it has so many models, so many variation, plus I'm doing custom job. How can one person do all that? It is possible, I'm doing it, but it's difficult to believe, isn't it? And then compared to companies that have 10, 20 people, they can't even have that many products. It is because they need to sell the same thing and sell a lot of the same thing to survive. I'm not even thinking about making money, just to survive. The making money part is not in this, in this conversation. That's a different story. A lot of companies need to survive just to break the overhead. So I hope I answered that question in details enough that you understand. There are more reasons to do that for, for other companies cannot do what I'm doing. Am I have passion in this? Well, I guess I love to do these things every day, if you call that passion. But I'm just doing it. I'm just doing it. So I work. 364 days a year maybe, seven days a week for sure. Whenever I wake up, if I don't have to go out and and, and have lunch lunch day with my food manager, I work. But in fact, I actually, when I when I sleep, I work. I just actually, this morning, I woke up at 4.30 in the morning and start thinking about what if. That's dangerous, isn't it? That's really dangerous. But I can't shut my mind off. And, oh, that's one more reason. I could not shut my mind off, but and then when I wake up, I can start putting parts together and see how it works. But if a company hiring a group of engineers, even that, even those engineers can make a greatest product in the world, the company won't let them because it won't sell. It's not sellable, so they have to do it on their own. If they do it on their own, it's back to what I am. So, see you. You see what the problem is. Okay, let's not call it a problem. Did you see what the factor is why they cannot do what I do? They, they just have to sell. The bottom line is they have to sell enough to cover the overhead, to cover the expenses, to keep the company going. That's the bottom line. Until you pass that line and make enough profit, you can't do what I'm doing. Even after you make enough profit, you. You, you still have to have the attitude that you want to truly do the best things that you can do in audio. I don't know how many people do, how many people actually have that. Okay, let me rephrase that. There are many people that have that attitude. It's just the reality won't let them implement that attitude. I'm a one man, I'm a one person company, I'm a one person, I don't have a family, I don't have second generation, I don't have a partner. I live by myself, I do what I want. So that helps, really helps. And I actually have nine system in this house and another two system in the workshop and one more system in the third building. And that one hasn't hooked up yet. So it's like 12 systems ready to go. Even if you have a passion, if you, if you live with the family, you can't do that. You just can't. So there are a lot of things that I'm doing in my life right now that's other, other like-minded people wanted to do, they might not able to do it. But back to the company things, is you understand why the big, big girl company or want to be big girl company cannot do what I do? So 
I think I'm going to stop now because I will be keep going on and on and on and there will be more reason to come up and saying what the, why the other company cannot do. You can figure it out yourself. You can see how they spend money, how I spend money, how they spend their time, how I spend my time. And then you can figure out, figure out why they cannot do what I do. So, okay. So I guess this video is just long enough. So I'm going to shut it off now. Until next time, stay safe. Bye.